create life. There is not another gender that can create life. And so imagine the power in having the ability to create life. Splice. Yes, welcome to another episode of the Nanaya Yabua podcast. I am super pumped, super excited because I'm in the studio with Aina Nia Ayo Dele. So, my sister, thank you for saying yes. Thank you for coming onto this podcast. I know you very, very, very busy individual, but you're not too busy for your people. The reason why I'm saying that is because you're a leadership coach, a wisdom teacher, an author, mother, grandmother, elder, and many, many, many more. Mm. Akwaba, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Asante sana. Thank you. <laughs> jambo, inzuri. Jambo, jambo. So I don't we do... <laughs> oh, <laughs> We've gone from West Africa to East Africa. And I went back to West Africa. Uh, West Africa. It's all good. I, I've been following your work quite a bit. I think more prominently on LinkedIn. And I fell in love. Mm. And the reason why I fell in love is that these conversations have been long in coming. The things that you're doing and even the generation, what we're doing as black people in this day and age has been long in coming. More often than not, I see a younger generation than me doing things, but the beauty of finding an elder who is still doing and giving and being in life. It's like, there is hope <laughs> and we are moving forward because there are people like you telling our stories, bringing us, grounding us and making everything about us being blacks in the world. I'm not talking about here in their world relevant, but most especially women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you see those in Zinga, Yas and Tua Queen Nani's powers over to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, listen, I am loving this conversation that has not even started yet. <laughs> because we started before we started, we started. in laughter, right? <laughs> And there is yes. nothing greater than laughter when, when two black women can come together and just laugh and more importantly, laugh at ourselves. Laugh. Then we know we're, we're, no, we're, 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 we're heading great. for joy and peace. You know, we're heading for joy and peace. So I'm happy to yeah. be here. Um, I'm happy to see the work that you're doing because I also, I checked you out, of course. And I kept thinking, I know that name. I know that name. And so, uh, honor, honor to the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Thank grateful that you've called me in and I'm glad that you talked about me beyond all those accolades. Cause you said I'm a grandmother. <laughs> I'm a mother. Right? I love that. I love that because there's so much more than this, you know, CV, you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So thank you for doing that. And I, I believe being a traditional person, I truly believe in your role as a mother and grandmother because what we input into our children and our children's children carries on for generations. So um, early I was having a conversation with somebody and we're talking about mental health and um, the research in Africa, mainly Africa, that's where I saw the research that when you solve, you mitigate the health, the mental health of one woman, it transcends to four generations. So, so I acknowledge the power that we do have in transforming our lives, which impacts our children, which impacts their children and their children's children. And who knows, maybe furthermore, 
we only see the four generations because sometimes it's the four generations that we see surviving. Mm -hmm. But they even go further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They even go further. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, sister, mm, you talk. So le le let's. There's a lot to talk about, and I'm trying to compact it into at least a 45 minutes conversation. If we are unable to finish this conversation, we'll come back and continue at another point. Mm -hmm. So let me get into the Women for Peace movement. <laughs> and yes, because I know there were Women for Peace movement earlier. So when I saw the Women for Peace, I said, ah, what is this that are you about this Women for Peace movement? But yours take a slightly different approach to women's for peace movement because the ones that I've seen historically are Oyibo people. But this is you. And when I when I read it, saw that and felt that I felt a different energy. Mm. Well, you know, you you opened up the conversation around for women for peace by sharing what the research is showing mm -hmm. for me that's that that's the key right there so if we think about how transatlantic slave trade colonization all of those things how they it intentionally if you destroy the well-being and the mental health and the spiritual health and the the um the physical health of women then you've destroyed four generations very quickly right just like that right so if we're trying to rebuild then we have to do the reverse or the same thing mm -hmm. on a different level so women for peace for me is about internal peace mm -hmm. supporting each woman and listen when we support black women <laughs> we're supporting all women right yes. Yes. so Women for Peace is about reminding us mm -hmm. of our power and reminding us as women, our roles, we are yummy. We are the mothers. We are the mm -hmm. first people, the mm -hmm. first, the first person that a child that a family gets engaged with is the mother, the woman, and whether you've given birth physically or you're giving birth in other ways. And so, for me, it's about getting the women to remember how powerful we are. Getting the women to then use our power to bring peace to ourselves first. And in bringing peace to ourselves, we're giving, bringing peace to our children. We're giving, bringing peace to our, our entire family. We're giving, bringing peace to the community. We're giving peace to our cities and our countries. And it goes on and on and on. But we can't talk about peace world peace and get angry and upset because that's what i've seen a lot we're very upset we we're distraught by the situation of the world but the situation is a, of the world is a reflection of what's going on with us mm -hmm. that's internal all that is our world yeah it's exactly what's going on with us collectively in our internal world so bringing a collective collection of women a co women collective together mm -hmm. And all of us on this mission for peace by bringing peace to ourselves, just imagine, just imagine what that is doing for generations, your children, your, your nieces, your nephew, your partners. You, I mean, just imagine what we're looking at when we're talking about peace individually. And therefore we're talking about mental health. We're talking about physical health. We're talking, you can't do anything without spirituality. I'm taking this from a spiritual perspective. This has to be grounded in spirituality. It has to be grounded in indigenous spirituality. And I'm not talking indigenous of this land. I'm talking about indigenous ways of being, going back to our natural ways of being. When that can happen and we come together collectively, because we will have 2,025 women in 2025 IWD, International Women's Day. We will. And so imagine, this is all I keep thinking about. 2,000, 
2,000 and thank you and 25 women magnifying, heightening our vibration and sending it out to the world, sending it out to the world. And we know that the studies have shown that when yes. one of us heighten our vibration, 7,000 people are impacted. Mm -hmm. 25, 2,025 women times 7,000. That's what I'm talking about. Times four generations. That's what Women for Peace is about. Wow. That is powerful. That is powerful. Whoa. And this man almost messed up my piece. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was uh, an Indian man. I, I, I saw something on your, on your Instagram about that. And I thought, he sent her fly boy. But the points you made were really important because it talks about stereotyping and prejudice. And yes. Yeah. So yes. I thought that was yes. really important. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I always have the Zen space and I think I got more of that um, from say Maya Angelou about self-love and having this place inside your soul that is pure, it's yes. clean and yes. don't let anybody come at it. So I was in that state yes. when I went out. It's yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was in that state when I went out. So I was very calm, very yes. peaceful until he nudged me. Yes. And you see, when he nudged me, I did not, some, you know, sometimes you hesitate and you get scared and everything. But if we talk about spirituality and ancestors, I felt like, all of them i felt like they just channeled and we were ready yeah. that is why i said the uh, queen zingas and the queen nannies and everybody i was ready for him because it wasn't only me standing there yes i was standing there with all of them all of you're them. giving me oh so, uh, uh, that is why, but unfortunately, we don't have enough of these conversations. We don't have enough of these conversations. And when I see you do it, I, I shouldn't say we don't have enough of these conversations. We have these conversations, but the more I look at spirituality and everything, it's from a Western person going yeah. to an Eastern place taking that instinct to ground themselves in this world but what about us because we gave it up we gave it up it was taken from us for sure colonization did that but we also have over generations bought into the lies right mm -hmm. bought into the lies about the the, 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 the our way of being being demonic yes because the lie then was saying, we are demonic, we're bad, we're wrong. So we gave it up and we became afraid of it mm -hmm. and afraid of ourselves. This is the power of being African. And we have ran away, given it up, stayed away from it, bought into the lie. So our job, your job, Nana, my job is to reclaim this. And to share this, this is not an, it, it is, they talk about new, new thought. This, we've been like this forever. Yeah. So it's to bring that into, bring that into this so-called new world. And, and use the, if the people from the West are going to the East and taking this, and they have fun, lots of labels that is put on it, right? Mm -hmm. There is a reason they're doing that. It's because of how potent it is. And we're running from it. And we could, we're running from it, so we're struggling on many different levels. We're in dis-ease. We're killing each other. We've lost our minds because we've given up ourselves. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my we're, goodness. We got to bring all our people from past, present and future. But remember every time, each time when I heal and I return and you heal and you return to our natural self, we're healing past, we're healing present, we're healing future. So more, we just have to keep doing the thing and, and reminding people that yes, you will come up. Folks will say to me, microaggression, how do you deal with microaggression? It's what you just said. Call in our people, <laughs> call in the ancestors. You don't have to do anything. We don't have to do anything. No. No. You don't have to do it. There's, there's nothing to do. Microaggression is always going to be there. You know, anti-black racism, anti-Africanism, it's always going to be there. It it is going to be It's how we deal with it. Yes. And and you you did mention, really, I was able to deal with it the way I dealt with it. Because, number one, I mastered the power of language. And when I moved into Brantford, I did my research on the journey of black people historically in this land. So yeah. I'm not the first black person here. We pre we predate those that came. Yeah. This Indian yeah. man. We predate them here. So when I say something and we went through a lot of terrible stuff in Brantford, in Norfolk, Simcoe, behind me here. So I have done the research of our history here. So the land that I was, I, I, I was, um, how do we call it? I am on right now. I think Joseph Brandt, the indigenous man, brought some across here into this Brantford, um, uh, Kitchener, Waterloo and Brantford yes. area. Yes. 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 So I know my history of the history of my people here. So he was not going to tell me, and he doesn't know my history or the history of my people migrating here forcefully all those years. 400 years? 400 years. So who are you to come just recently with your half shoddy? Oh, I'm recording. I'll continue. (laughs) With your half shoddy English to tell me you people. And oh, the you people came. And they came with their numbers. So too bad for him. His wife pulled him away. Okay, let me stop. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so let's get back to you. So when we know, I did I pronounce your name correctly in the first place, Aina or Aina? Aina. It depends on where you're from. Exactly. And uh, I have a friend, uh, 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 she's now an ancestor, Tato. She pronounced my name exactly how you just pronounce it. Ina, Ina, Nia. <laughs> I say Ina, Nia. But, you know, I'm always loving to hear my name Aina, Nia. with the African tongue. So, Ayodele, because you... Ayodele. Ayo, you see, I would say Ayodele because... It's Nigerian. Yes. yes. <laughs> so are you Dele? <laughs> yes. Yes. I love to hear it in that song. I love to hear it in that song. Yes. I'm Jamaican and sometimes I just love to hear the tongue of my people. People. So yes. you say it exactly how you say it. I love to hear it in my tongue, in the tongue of our original people. Yeah. Between Ghana, between uh, what is present Ghana and Nigeria, there's a lot of Yoruba, Igbos, and I yes. can't speak yes. people that ended up in, yes. um, forcefully removed and ended up in Jamaica as yes. well. So you do have a lot of the lingering languages in in Jamaica yes. as well. Yes. I'll not get into it. That is a whole separate conversation. Next day. <laughs> Next day. <laughs> But it's an important conversation. It is an important conversation. I, I've been told that there are certain words I need to, because I did a little bit of a breakdown of language. I love language. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Me too. So I did a little breakdown of some of the Akan words mm-hmm. and how English words don't do its justice. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. And it's like our people were like, what? Wow. I said, yes. 
Yeah. Because some some words, some English words, we can't even find in our original language. They don't exist. They you know? don't. They, they don't, don't exist. They don't. Sister, don't make me take us off track. So. <laughs> You mentioned joy, you mentioned love, and it's like, oh, I love that. I love that. That is, mm, 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 mm. but you are a wisdom teacher, so let's go to wisdom teaching. What does wisdom mean? Because somebody is like, wisdom teacher, who is a wisdom teacher? What, what is that? Because I, I think there's a, there's a distinction between knowing and wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. So wisdom is about how we use our knowledge there is one a, thing yeah I, you said it and an akan proverb came to mind what is it there's the difference between knowledge and wisdom yes 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 so yes. it just popped in my head thank you like, now oh. i can't wait to, to to hear this recording so i can keep saying what you just said okay but there is, yeah, because right, our people know, our mm -hmm. people know that there is uh, having knowledge is just anybody can have knowledge, mm -hmm. but it's about how we use the knowledge. And so for me, you know, I've spent the last 20 years really learning and understanding my original self, mm -hmm. my African self. Because I was part of my people in Jamaica were part of those captured and stolen and, and, and taken away, which means that my land, my language, my traditions, my culture, my spiritual practice, all of that were taken away. So I've spent the last 20 years re remembering them mm -hmm. and reclaiming them and, and as best as I can and understanding them so that I can be a whole human being, mm. right? I speak of myself. And in those learnings, you know, throughout the years, I have been very fortunate. Ghana is one of my favorite places. And um, when I went to Ghana, the, the high priest for the, for, the, for the council said to me, I brought, I brought women down. I said, you know, I brought sacred women. It was this, their our first, first sacred leadership training. So I brought, I brought the women down to, you know, to be culminated in Ghana. And the high priest says, and I, and of course we didn't speak the same language, but so it was translated. Uh, I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. And so come. And so she had a private ceremony with me uh, all day. <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to bring the women at that because she needed to spend time with me. And in that, in that experience, I was there around her on the compound in ceremony, really learning, really learning. Had a translator, hope to God she translated everything. But you know, sometimes translation is not even necessary. Mm -hmm. because the spirit works and you the spirit is too. Yeah. yeah. And then we went to an all night sermon, lots of stuff. It was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she initiated me in Akan. And she transitioned um, 20, 22, because I was on my way back to Ghana. I wanted to see her mm -hmm. before she left. She was 104. Yeah, she was 104. And so we, we stayed in touch. Um, as best as we could over the years. So I, I say that and I, so I remember, so that it's so, be, and before that, I was initiated in Yoruba and, and over the last 20 years have been, you know, growing and, 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 and doing my own transformation mm -hmm. through the Yoruba trad tradition. So I'm a priest of Yoruba. So these these practices, the practices of the Akan people, practices of the Yoruba people, which are the same, <laughs> really, um, have really helped me to remember myself and to ground myself beyond this world. Mm -hmm. 
because this world is not my world. Um, this, 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 this world. And when I say this world, the, the outside world, right? The world, the colonized world. And so I live in the spaces, um, but I'm driven by the traditions of my people. I'm grounded by the tradition of my people. They helped me. When I lose my way, they pull me back, right? And I always hope that they I don't lose my way too far. <laughs> but when I lose my way, they pull me back and they guide me. I, my life is governed and guided by the ancestors. Um, I'm very clear on that. You know, I remember a time when I wouldn't be able to say that because of fear of judgment. Uh, so I'm glad that I've grown beyond that. And so my life is indeed guided by the ancestors. Uh, and it takes away worry and it takes away um, hardness and concerns. And because even when I, th when I think about that con conversation you had, that situation you had with that man, I, and the first thing that came to me is I wonder why the ancestor needed Nana to have that experience. I wonder where, who needed to be healed, right? And the fact that the ancestors came, they came and they did their thing because they're always taking care of us. So if something like that happens, then it happened for a reason, you know? And so I can't tell you that I'm always in this place, but I'm often in this place of seeing things beyond what is in front of us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's my spirituality. That's my practice. And I, I'm very clear, and you know, I always like to say this because it has nothing to do with religion. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what somebody's religion is. It's religion is 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 a very different is a different thing than spiritual practices, but um, and the practices of our ancestors, right? It's not against it. It's not either or. It's 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 just a way of being. Yeah. It, it, it's so amazing you say that it's a way of being because my spiritual, um, how do we call it? Um, it's not a spiritual director, but my spiritual mentor is an Anglican priest. Yeah. And yeah. the reason why he is my spirit, a spiritual um, mentor is that he acknowledges tradition. Mm. And he knows me and church don't mix, but me and my God are one. <laughs> yes. Yes, Nana. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I feel like I'm talking to a Jamaican. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, oh, it's telling God. that you said that I have had so many instances that people see meet me and I give them my English name, Bernadette, and it's like, you're Jamaican? No. Try again. So I get Jamaica first, Nigeria second, Ghana third. I was having this conversation early this morning. This is, this is, because, you know, it really is just one. But when you said that, when you said me and church don't mix, <laughs> that sound exactly how a Jamaican person would say it. And you know what? I am happy because I have worked with beautiful souls that are Jamaican. Aunt Betty Iceland, that really mummed me, treated me well when I started in the nursing. She was there when my my late husband passed it's like and we still talk up to now and it, it, it's like almost every woman that has been there majority have been jamaican so they feed me jerk chicken rice and peas like <laughs> soup like <laughs> when i was pregnant <sighs> you eating no child go sit there so have something to eat and then they, it's like they bring me food, something to eat, relax, and then come back. So they've taken care of me. So if I'm Jamaican, that's okay. <laughs> I Jamaican. never said no. My father used to say, my father was an activist, and he used to say, Jamaicans are Ashanti people. 
So we, he know we from Ghana. He know we from Ghana. <laughs> so see, again, this man missed it. Asante Kotoko, when you kill a thousand, a thousand more comes. They are the porcupine warriors. So this one, when you call the Yasantu and her people came in thousands, thousands. Can you imagine? <laughs> they came when, in thousands. Yes. With their machetes too. Yes. <laughs> With now, too. In saying that, and 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 me, l- let me come back f- for this. Uh, this experience actually just clicked in my head that women for peace movement. My experience with a man who is a patriarch suppresses women. That is why he thought he could do that. Yes. How can this women for peace sort of help women within societies that? Um, how do you call it, um, you know, suppresses women's will, help them become part of this broader narrative. Because you and I, and maybe fortunately from where we coming from or yeah. being here, respect women in cap- certain capacities within society. Yeah. Not all women in all societies have that, you know, opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And so I say we have to first, um, so I believe Mm -hmm. when women are at peace, when women really know their power, Mm -hmm. we are able to disrupt Mm -hmm. and interrupt Mm -hmm. and prevent Mm -hmm. the patriarchal oppressions. Mm -hmm. But we can't do that. And we are able to do that better when we're doing it collectively Mm -hmm. right so i think that's a really good question how do you and i are you know you and i are in free spaces let's say so what happens for a woman who is not in a free space Mm -hmm. and what and and how does she bring peace to herself and where i go with this is i think about our ancestors that were captured Mm -hmm. And I think about the ones that were particularly were enslaved and generations of us that went through slavery. Mm -hmm. And I know that our ancestors found peace. It may not look like what you and I see as peace, Mm -hmm. but I know they found peace. They found peace through their singing, Mm -hmm. their chanting. They found peace through their humming and their rocking. Mm -hmm. They found peace through their cooking. They found peace through feeding the village and feeding those who were around them. And even in the midst of their rapes, they found peace. They remembered their gods. They remembered their spirit and they found peace. Mm -hmm. And they found peace in those ways until they could find peace in other ways. Mm -hmm. And so I don't believe that I have the audacity to tell a woman how to find peace in these spaces. Mm -hmm. But what I can do is say to her, you have the power to find peace. Hello, are you still there? Nana? I am here. (laughs) Okay. I I just focused on you because what you're saying is profound and I just needed all the attention on you. Oh, I I appreciate that. Yeah, I think Mm -hmm. what what we can do though is encourage women and and support women in empowering themselves to know that they can define peace. So I'll tell you an example. I was working with a woman several years ago, not too long ago, that was in a really, really hostile situation. Mm-hmm. And if you know, I, I'm sure you've worked with women, uh, you know, women in violent situation, violence against women, gender-based mm-hmm. violence, those things. And we know that in these situations, we can say, leave. You know, it's very easy for us to say, leave. Why don't you leave? Get up and leave. Yes. But it's not that easy because a lot of times they are in situations that they are not strong enough yet to leave or they're afraid or they're afraid to leave because their children will be killed or they will be killed. There's all of that. So for me, what I, what I did in this situation 
was work with a woman to find peace in the midst of that war, in the midst of that violence. And so the question is, when are you most happy? When do you feel a little bit of joy? Just a little bit of joy. What brings you a little bit of joy? Right? And then do that thing that brings you a little bit of joy mm -hmm. every day in the midst of the violence, right? Because I'm figuring that's what our ancestors did. Mm -hmm. And then the more you do it is the better you feel. The better you feel is the stronger you the get. You get. The stronger you get is the more you remember your power. The more you remember your power is the stronger you get. The stronger you get. So you just keep doing that, right? This, 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 this joy that brings you peace and that peace that brings you power. And when you get to that place of power, then she was able to make a choice to exit the situation. It's difficult to exit a situation when you're feeling weak when you're feeling afraid, when you don't know how powerful you are. So for me, it's that joy that goes to that peace, that goes to that power, that goes to that courage. The vibration gets higher and higher. And once she gets there, then she gets courageous enough to exit the situation and know that she will be free and that she will be safe because she also remembers that she has ancestors regardless of her ethnicity. She has ancestors that will guide her. She has guides, she has guards, and she knows this. And so she can take a dash for it and she can exit and get support. That's what <sighs> Women for Peace can do. Wow. So guys, if you're watching this interview, please uh, go online women for peace even if you google women for peace with a Ines first name it will pop up every information on google on youtube it will pop up because i did it <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know that's good to know that's good to know all the information will pop up and be part of this movement uh, i uh, it's needed because it appears that the testosterone of patriarchy is everything is war, 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 war. At the end of the day, it's women and children that suffer the most. And why is it that there is fear of womanhood? Ha! Ha! Let's talk about that, Nana. Let's talk about that. Go ahead. <laughs> fear of womanhood. So if we think about the mothers, right? The Iyamis, the, the, the woman. We create life. There is not another gender that can create life. And so imagine the power in having the ability to create life. If we can create life, and if we understand this womb, and I'm talking about women who may have had their womb removed, doesn't matter. You have a vacuum here. You have something here that is a womb. That womb is a creation itself. That tells me that we are amazing the power. If women ever knew how powerful we are, we would bow at our own feet because we have the ability to create. We have the ability to recreate. We have the ability to change things. We have intuition. You talk about a woman's intuition, right? Lots of people talk, oh my, a woman's intuition. And what a woman can hold, what we can hold be without breaking, you think about the oppression of, upon women and we can hold that and still be alive. We think about when a woman, many, many years ago, when I was, and I'm talking many years ago, when I was in sales and I remember when the car industry, I've never sold cars, that, that wasn't my, my, I did services, not, not products. But I remember when the car industry in particular was trying to hire women 
to do their sales because they realized that the stats were showing that women could move sales way quicker and much higher than men. And I'm not talking about doing it because they showed their breasts or doing it because they wore short skirts. I'm talking about this ability that women have to get things done. done. We just have that ability. We are the first, we talk about um, metaphysicians. Yeah. What is a metaphysician? A metaphysician is that is the ability to do to see beyond the physical. That's what women can do. We've been turning things into other things forever. You should be afraid of us. But we if we ever understood our power and we don't have to, we know it is very clear. We all know that we have dual energies, right? We have dual energies. We're masculine, feminine, feminine energy. Mm -hmm. But our full feminine energy, that full feminine energy is so powerful. I always say, you move that cauldron called our womb, our waist. <laughs> that alone can turn a thing. That alone can turn a thing. So you can imagine when so many of us get together and we truly understand how powerful we are. Oh, baby. So yes, they should be afraid of us. And they are afraid of us. And that's why they try to oppress us. It makes sense to me. <laughs> and and you know what? I, I, as you were speaking, it just took me back a couple of um, of of um, directions. The Inquisition, uh, the Salem witch hunts, <laughs> and then and then there there was there was a book that was written how to train a nigger, and the target was to um how do we call it the target was black women yeah get to the woman and the woman will do the rest for the progeny of course will tame the man and also the children so uh, as you were speaking it was all coming to me why it wow. makes sense it makes sense it makes sense and if you can destroy so when i hear the oppressors and there is one that is running for election in the united states right now i won't say the name because i won't bring that in the even the name in that is always targeting women, women always trying yes. to bring down the woman trying to bring yes. down the woman there's the woman is so afraid of the woman because it's fear it's fear yeah it's fear because you know the power. And even if they don't know it, that they can articulate it, they subconsciously, it, they know it. They know it. So if they know that, then we need to know it too. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to throw this in. Ego. Ego. Because at the end of it, the fear of women, I the women's power is boils down i believe to ego and control mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because uh, i remember when i was a young girl growing up a, a friend's father he's deceased now he said the tongue and uh, uh, this may not be right but it, it's it's a saying he said the tongue of a, a woman is six inches long but it can kill a man of six feet tall. You see, I, I, I can't wait to re, re watch this because I need all of that. <laughs> we need the to bring all of that into yes. So wow. when he said that as a teenager, it got stuck in my head. Tongue because of a woman is six inches, inches long. long and it can kill a man, a man of six feet, six tall. feet tall yes because you know we have a tongue <laughs> we have a tongue so when he said that he was telling us as young girls myself and his uh, three two daughters to be mindful of, of how we speak yeah yes so uh, that is why it stuck with me for so long and it still, you know, influences how it's, I speak and relate to people. 
it's almost like having the ashe then having the ashe on our on our tongue and so because our our tongue i I'm, I'm glad you brought this up i never thought about this because our what we say as women is so powerful and it can make and it can destroy yes yes it can make and it can break yes. yes and yet so we have to be mindful then what we say about ourselves yes and to ourselves yes because sometimes we think it's other people that is destroying us but we are in fact destroying ourselves because that is how powerful our tongue is as women yes and then if you are a woman of the first world, meaning you're an African woman of African descent, I'm going to say that just because of that, there are extraordinary ashe in your mouth, on your tongue, because you're a woman that your people are indigenous people in any way. Then there's additional ashe on. This is really important. It's thank you for that because I haven't. I haven't thought of that. Yes. And, and it's this same tongue that eats both salt and sugar. It eats, there, there is a proverb, but I've forgotten the proverb, yeah. that it eats salt and sugar. So it's not the salt and sugar, what is going in, but what is coming, it's coming out, out. Whether it is joke or it's not joke. So far as it comes out, that is it. I've forgotten the proverb, but there's a proverb that yeah. encapsulates that saying. When I find it, I'll let you know. Please. Yes. yes. I, you know, I, 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 our tongue, I see, I never even, because I never thought of it like that. Because often I say to women, be mindful of what we say, put sweetness in our mouth. Yes. Right? Put sweetness. In. I know for me, because of my ashes, I have to be exceptionally mindful of what I say. But I think it's all of us. It's not just me. It's, it's all, all of us. us. Yes, yes. And uh, as you're talking about self-love and spirituality and even uh, higher vibration, it's also what we're telling ourselves, whether internally or externally, and what we're telling the other person externally or we insulting them internally so yeah. that we need to be mindful of and if it's negative and it's going to disturb us we need to um work on letting it go mm -hmm. that is not to say that i've let that man go because yes. i'm still on it because his was a, a teachable moment yes that yes even i need yes. to talk about self-love yes. with that and yes. the reason why I was able to stand, stand when it comes to the self-love. But that was me preventing his negativity from penetrating, penetrating you. my space. Yeah. It would not be allowed. So I had to put that armor, that shield, to shield myself from that venom that is coming out of his mouth, out of his spirit, out of his soul, out of his heart. Mm -hmm. Because I was walking in pureness of joy and happiness and purpose. And he was not going to, and I was not going to allow him to kill my joy. Ashe. Ashe, ashe, ashe. But that's so. Can you imagine though? I think about it. You're a woman who is walking in joy. You're a woman you, before you leave your house. You're centering yourself. You're covering. Yeah. So can you imagine those same words being spoken to a woman who or a girl who doesn't have don't have your wisdom, don't know what you know is not operating in your consciousness. That can destroy a person. Yes. Right. And that's why the message we have to keep sending this message because we, we cannot stop the oppressor really, mm -hmm. you know, can try, but we can't necessarily, because we don't have any control over their thinking and their th and how they, but what yes. we can do 
is we can take care of ourselves and we can protect ourselves and we can guide ourselves and we can guard ourselves and we can make those choices. But if we don't know how to, if we've always been taught differently, how do we do that? Yes. You know, how do we do that? And so there is a, there is a person, there are people, there are women, there are girls that is going to listen to this program. Hear your story, hear what we're saying. And then say, oh, my goodness, how do I, I want to guard myself. I want to guard myself. Oh, what does it mean? What does it mean to call in spirit? What does it mean to call in the ancestors? And then they'll start to do their research. We live in an information age, right? But that's how the message keep getting. Because I went on your Instagram, I saw it quickly. And I thought, I, it, what, what is this about? Right? Mm -hmm. But this conversation around guiding yourself, God, if you did not know, that you could call in all of your ancestors mm -hmm. and stop that venom from reaching you. It would have penetrated you and caused illness. And let me tell you, you know this, trauma, trauma sits in the very womb we're talking about that carries power. Yeah, It sits in our womb and it shows up as fibroids and all kinds of cancerous diseases and all kinds of stuff. That's where it sits. Well, I took my out, so I don't have to deal with that. So girl, I'm ready. <laughs> girl, listen, listen. <laughs> see, that thing sits there and will manifest. Manifest. All yes. kind of thing. So if we don't know how to protect ourselves, that's where it's going. That's where that trauma, a, mm -hmm. a, a simple interaction with an oppressor can create trauma if we're not careful. And so remember my sister Nana that people are in workplaces, in situations that the minute they walk in, even before they go, I know women who Sunday nights are hard for them because they're in institutions that are violent. Yes. Which is most of them, right? Yes. And they're in homes and communities and spaces and you know, our, even our own brothers, our own people of our own race that are so, so oppressive upon our women. And women are dealing with this every day. We have to teach them how to guide and guard themselves. Yes. That is a profound, uh, profound topic that at one point in time, we'll need to dig deeper into it because it's a very necessary thing. Many women are struggling and you asked about, you know, spirituality, how does one ground themselves and there's the information out there. I would say that start with a simple prayer. Whether you go to church or you're Muslim or whatnot, you thank the creator and do your gratitude. Yeah. You are grateful for waking up this morning. And pray that, you know, when you go out, things will be positive. And if they're not, what lessons do you get to learn yes. from them? And yes. pile these lessons up. Because these lessons are the root of wisdom. That's it. That's uh, it. You are the wisdom teacher, not me. <laughs> uh, listen, I am grateful. It is. <laughs> I, you know, I wake up yes. every morning. My, mm -hmm. my day starts with exactly that. Thank you, God. Yeah. Thank you, God. Good morning, God. Is actually what I say. Yeah. Good morning, God. Thank you for waking me up. And just sit there. Just don't just rush out of bed. Just, just, just sit there just for a little bit. Just lie there for a little bit. No matter whether you're beside somebody or not. Good morning, God. Thank you. Whatever you call God. Thank you, creator, whatever. Janami, whatever it is. And then just lie there and let's let just connect with yourself. Yes. Before you start your day. Yes. That's the protection. And you know one thing that I learned. I, I, I don't know whether I learned it somewhere or whatnot, but when I realized that there's a purity, a space that I could call pure and whatnot, I made it a point that when I'm going to bed, I plug into the universe. Yes, mama. 
So how we go to bed and how we get up yes. is key. I'm going to have to give us a little bit of a breakdown about her space coming up September 19th at 7 p.m. What is her? So we, so part of what, one of the things that we're doing, we've started doing in April, every month we, we meet. So come, come Nana, we want to see you on the last, usually the last Saturday morning of each month, we gather as women for peace. And so her space is an organization that is focused on women. It's a women, it's a women based organization. And so they're doing a, um, a full moon ceremony. Uh, uh, and so we've, they've invited us in to focus. They're going to use that session that they do every month for women for peace. So their women are coming into women for peace and we're inviting women to come and be a part of this, a part of her space. And we're doing that with different groups across around the world. Uh, we are going into their space with women for peace, you know, as we do our space as well. Once, uh, the fourth, fourth Saturday of every month, but folks can go on our website follow us on these social media and uh, get involved. And if you can't come to our community circles, we'll come to you. We'll come to you. And if you can't come to our community circle, start your own circle and just let us know about it. If you have a group of women, Nana, just, just let us know. And we're going to plug in, you know, we're going to, this is not uh, an Ania thing. This is not, this is, it's I, a I movement. Want, it's a movement. It's a movement. Yes. You never have to talk to me. You never have to see me. I just want to make sure to know that we're doing it. You have lots of wisdom. You can share lots of people have lots of wisdom. When we come onto our community circles once a month, I get, we get to share and we get to hear from all kinds of people at different ages mm -hmm. uh, and we share wisdom together. So thank you for, for uh, having me on and, and for your laughter and for your wisdom and for us to share together. That's what we're here for, my sister Nana. Thank you Thank so you. much. I truly appreciate you. I appreciate everything that you're doing for yourself, for the universe. And I thank the creator, however the journey has been, that you're here for a reason and a purpose. And we met for a reason and a purpose. And we are both going to do what life has intended us to do purposefully. Have a beautiful day. Deep love, my sister. You are giving me all kind of God bombs. Blessings, blessings, my sister. Amen.